Hello. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Welcome on in. A little bit of cozy variety this weekend. Oh my god. <laughs> Please hold. And enjoy this extremely rare shot of my face without glasses. <laughs> I got so much done yesterday, chat. I was... I was like on another level. And let's ignore the fact that it was because the month ended, snuck up on me suddenly. Can you imagine there only being 31 days in March? What's up with that? Not even close. Was that blue steel? It was more like blue surge, am I right? You got surge and pizza? Oh my god. Last night, Joe cooked um, salsa verde. Salsa. Salsicha verde. Green sausage. Really struggling there. And some oven roasted potatoes. And then she made like this delicious kale salad with pumpkin seed. Anyways, I got super spoiled last night. Ate like a king. Pizza was earlier in the week. Man, these things do not get clean. What's happening? <sighs> Joe's shouting to me. She's like, glasses don't get clean just by rubbing them. You have to clean them with the spray. Which is fair. How's everybody doing today? You having a good one, I hope? Yeah, yesterday I got all of my small... I think, I think finally I have cleared through my backlog of things that I can do. So the only thing I have to focus on is merch. I think I can actually get that done this weekend. Viscount. I'm going to pronounce it correctly now. Viscount ticks. The S's are silent. Sorry, I stole Ink Slayer's joke. About to head around a friend's, but I figured I'd drop by and say hi. I appreciate that. Welcome on in. <laughs> Unsubbed. Sorry, unubbed. Got you. The S is silent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Spent six hours yesterday figuring out how to make a kelp farm and create. Create is so good, you know? I wish I was better at create, but I have to learn. Can't just like download those skills directly into my head. Spent the entire day fixing the company website, then a stressful 14 trial now unwinding. That's a big day. That's a very big day. <sighs> hey, let's play a new game. So... This is actually a video game that people have been recommending for a very, very long time. It's called Terra Nil. And I was able to ignore demos. I was able to ignore, I think, early access. And I believe this is now the full release of the game. I've got friends who are playing this already, too. And it's very rare for a game to be this heavily recommended by the community, but a lot of people were like, search Terranil, search Terranil. So here you go. Chat, Terranil. Another game with Chivos? That's just everything on Steam, isn't it? Could have sworn I played the demo for this point? I don't think I did. I know we watched the trailer for it on demo days, though. Looks like a very Surge game. Yeah, as always. Why is this game so... Why? Maybe it'll get louder when we're not in the... Uh, in the everything. Hold on, what happens if I click... Oh, I can't. Alright. Nope. <laughs> well... Let's see what happens. Good morning, honey, honey banani. My mouse cursor's a little leaf. Oh, 
Beginner's Guide to Ecosystem Restoration. This book serves as a guide to the intricate process of restoring an environment from a wasteland to a thriving ecosystem. The process is not always easy. And even with this guide, you'll need to experiment to understand exactly what needs to be done. In the pages that follow, you will find descriptions of the region's flora and fauna you are likely to encounter. The book also contains blueprints of machines and structures that will help you in your task. If you are successful, you will eventually no longer need this book. When that happens, I ask that you pass it along, that it may serve someone else. Good luck with your journey of restoration. Is a reverse city builder just a demolitions expert? Sure. Select your approach. There are a variety of approaches to wasteland reclamation. I could be an gardener, an ecologist, or an environmental engineer. The gardener is recommended for players seeking a more relaxing experiment experience. The ecologist is for people who like strategy games and the environmental engineer not recommended for a first playthrough. So I'm, I'm torn. I'm conflicted here. Morning, Sammy. Because I'm both a strategy gamer and somebody seeking a relaxing, relaxing experience. What do you think, chat? Type gardener or ecologist in chat. What kind of playthrough do you want to watch? Everyone's saying ecologist. Obviously, the environmental engineer would be able to build canals, but I don't think we're that good much of a gamer. All right, everybody's saying ecologist. That's fair. That's not true. Some people did say gardener, but you know. Ecologist is probably our mood. That's fair. The kind that Surge likes. Oh, I like all of these things. Let's give Ecologist a try. Now, what I don't know is if this is a completely different like playstyle experience or if this is just a flavorful way of talking about video game difficulty. Starting resources, a thousand. Base building, I don't know what any of these mean. Zen mode, disable. Okay. To begin with, some basics. Pan the camera by moving your mouse. I can also WASDA. Okay. Alternatively, you can press and hold the middle mouse button. Okay, so we have click and drag. WASDA. Whoop, boo. Gotcha. Any wasteland reclamation project should start with a turbine. Place one now. Turbines must be placed on rocks. Gotcha. Oh, I love that. Cleaning the soil. Now that you have electricity, you can clean the soil. Try to fit four toxin scrubbers as far from the turbine as possible. I hold down shift. Yeah. I already love this. Ooh, look, we made podzel. Some buildings can be rotated with R, or the mouse wheel. Select an irrigator to try this now. Oh! Clean soil provides the perfect place to grow greenery. Greenery provides resources which are used to create buildings. Construct three irrigators on clean soil. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness, look at that. Love that. Does it feel like the range of this one is larger than the previous one? I got it, I'm gonna make an L shape here. If you're lost, you can always look at the handbook for hints on what to do next. So we have a greenery goal. We're at 24% of our greenery goal. Look, a tree! 
To increase the landscape's greenery is your primary goal, but remember to keep an eye on your available resources. To begin with, hit a greenery target of 30%. Well, well, well. Interesting. Why, I wonder why it stopped there. Oh, is it because of my power? Oh, I don't know how to undo things, which is very interesting. Fascinating. So even if the, fascinating, okay, I'm learning a lot. So even if the radius of this is longer, if it's not in power, it doesn't work. So if I do this, that should expand now, right? There's an order of operations. Oh, sequencing. Now, I wonder why... If I do that, uh oh, oh, ever played Path of Exile? My O sounds exactly like one of the characters. Which character? Reclaim 138 more greenery blocks to unlock. Nico the Depths guy. Really? Hmm. So I can't help but notice. Oh, interesting. I wonder if there's a push pull. So this costs 50, but if I get refunded the full amount afterwards, I wonder if that's good or not. So these can't go there anywhere. Okay, does it have a bigger range up top? Doesn't look like it. Very interesting. I don't like that I'm missing spots. This bothers me. I just need 13 more green though. So I guess that means that's overlap. That's wasted potential. Looks like it doesn't ever want to be in the water. Whatever, let's do that. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's get a big old, big old sideways one here. I guess I could go for an L shape later. All right, I've now unlocked the water pump. Pumps fill dry riverbeds, river, or pardon me, river, yeah. Pumps fill dry riverbeds, river banks are cleansed by the water. The range is extended by elevation, I see. So, for example, forty nine Valian. Let's go.
Give him one of these. Ooh. Yeah, there you go, chat. Inkslayer has correctly identified our first canal. You're welcome. What are you? Calcifer crystallizes nearby greenery, creating rocks. Oh, I see. I see and I understand. So that's how I meant to build in, build in these areas. Well, let's just unlock whatever that is first as well, you know? I wonder if eventually we get a larger power thingy. Tell me about yourself, Calcifer. Ah. <gasps> Heartbeat noises. Oh, okay, so that was a waste. Wait, I can undo? <gasps> I can undo! Sorry. It's very exciting. Something plus twenty one. But it is important to me because it uh, perfectly covers everything. <laughs> I had a th I saw a thumbnail of Surge without glasses and I had to click to see what was going on. I was cleaning my glasses. It's rare, right before damage? All right, what do you do? The excavator creates a new riverbed, but poisons the land around it. Can be rotated. So I wonder if I do this. Oh, it needs power first, eh? Hmm. Retry. Sometimes the best way forward is to start afresh with new knowledge. Do you have to get 100%? Why is it asking me to retry? Would you like to concede? No. What did I do wrong? Is it saying I soft locked myself? Things I failed to do to resource scarcity. I mean, this is my primary goal. So it assumes that I can't get here. There's definitely a little bit of wastage. Good morning, Chris. It's just telling me if I make a mistake, I can go back. Don't worry about it. Okay. It's not telling me I've already lost. Be kind of funny. So what if I did this? I wonder if the water fills automatically. Pew! It does. Okay. 
Now what I can do is I can calcifer down here. Maybe I am dead. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm dead. Interesting. I'll retry. Temperate. Reclaiming this landscape will involve wind turbines for power, toxin scrubbers to cleanse the soil, and water pumps to restore the rivers. The steps to creating a temperate forest are not always straightforward, and you may need to use controlled fires before the trees can thrive. Oh! Well, well, well. It's a generated map. I have a good one, Viscount. So let's go here for starters. Let's hit him with one of these. I think I want to start with the water. I think I like starting with water. Look at this, we got a tree. Oh. All right. Good. Good. So now I would need need to power stuff if I wanted to try and keep going this way, right? Looks like we playing Timberborn now. Honestly fair. Can maybe get some resources up in here. This is challenging. Turns out cozy game is challenging. Alright, let's hit him with a calcifer. Every time I say calcifer, I can't help but think of uh oh my goodness, what's it called? You know what I'm thinking about? No, oh, not spoop prefer. No, I'm thinking of um Howl's Moving Castle. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. Thank you. Plus 100. Got this game yesterday, played for 45 and beat this level. Oh no. Well, now the pressure's on. What if I can't beat this level in 45? Does that mean I'm bad at games? 
almost certainly yes. <clears throat> Known gamer Surge will get it. This game might not be a competition. Shucks. I guess. If you put it that way. Unless you want to make it one. Nah. Oh no. Oh god. Four balloons. Snurge. What are we even talking about? <laughs> to be good at games is means to have fun. Yeah, that's fair. So, I'm, I keep trying to set up, like, the big plays TM. Maybe that isn't needed. Feels like it might be kind of a waste. Gives me perfect coverage, though. So I lose six blocks, but I think I make up for it with a different six blocks. All right. Ooh. Nice. <clears throat> So I think if I got another power node around here. Oh well, snap, this game's out. Came out on the 28th Mana League. Came out very recently. All right, so I got about a hundred more points that I can do. Nope, that's bad. I die if I do that. All right, good talk. Good talk. Really wanted to make that good and pretty. Oh, that's at 103. That says 111. This game's hard. <laughs> Turns out that this is a puzzle game. Forty-two, fifty-one, fifty-two. Barely pays for itself. I think I'm trying to be... I feel like I'm trying to be too... Coverage? That's the word I'm looking about. Like I'm trying to be too thorough. When maybe that's not what this is about. Hold on. Alessandro says, catching up on Create Astral with my partner, and she was actually the one that made the backpack mod. 
And she was excited that you A, read the tooltip, and B, enjoyed the functionality. Oh, rad. Okay. Optimal rather than efficient? Well, no. The way my brain works when I see a game like this is I want every single tile to be green or else it's a personal failing. And I just don't think that's what this game is about. Also, I think what I'm supposed to do, instead of do a, um, instead of do this, right, just to make it pretty and be like, all right, first I'm going to finish the water and then I'm going to write like, um, like coats of paint. I think I just need to fix, fix, focus on one area. I think, all right, I've got a new strategy. I got a new strategy. So rather than do type by type and move across, like do all the power and then do all the, um, the X and the Y and the Z. I think what I'm supposed to do <clears throat> is start in a corner or a region and move from there. So new strategy time, water pump. Fascinating. I didn't expect it to work like that. That's very interesting. Uh, uh, these hills are actually very tricky. 80, 82, like look at all this dead ground I left at the bottom though. That feels bad. Thirty seven. There we go, 123. That's significantly better. <clears throat> now, mind you, I'm still operating at a deficit here <clears throat> in that I'm not getting more resources than I'm spending. And I think that's a problem. We'll keep going. Oh, can't shoot through a rock. Oh. <clears throat> well then. Can't place you in water. Are there upgrades later? I have no idea. I know nothing. So I'd like to try and extend the water in this direction. What if I... Yes. Pew! 
Piu! Um. Uh. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I was off by some uncountable number there. Let's try one less. Third time's the charm. <laughs> There's not enough water pressure? Oh! Yeah, because I... Because of back here... I totally destroyed that waterfall, remember? There is no water pressure. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get there with this. Maybe. Is there a way to like hold down a button and see what my my existing coverage is for something or not? Nah? One hundred and sixty. Feels pretty good. Nice. So, I don't know if it's going to be good enough, but the current strategy does appear to be working, which is kind of cool. You know, I'm, I'm here for this. I've only got four hundo right now, though, which makes me a little bit nervous. So if I do like this, and then like this. Very pretty. What's up, duck? like to maybe not destroy the waterfall, the water source again this time, you know? So if I do this, what does this get me? This gets me water flowing down. So the excavator is important so I can extend water lines. So I can power areas, like big flat open areas that have no power. They're just a little bit more destructive than I would have hoped. They're also quite expensive. Yeah, definitely. But the other issue is... Maybe I'm maybe I'm just supposed to focus on the existing rivers first. 
Combat Wombat, what's up, friend? Thank you for the 47. No, oh, can't do that. To make a Toxin Scrubber first. 47 months, that's such a long time. Thank you very much, friend. Minus 20. Feels good. Seventy two there. That's a sixty eight. Seventy two. All right. Reminds you a little bit of Timberborn, mostly from the water physics I'm imagining. Ninety. Big fan of the ninety. <laughs> I'm starting to think I might not be very good at this game. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? I feel like I've lost again. Something hasn't clicked yet. Although it, was, although it is very chill. This is more of a puzzle game than a strategy game. Which is fair. Like, where did I go wrong? Maybe spending this was bad? So spending this... I was like 150 or something like that, 125. Because I think you always want to be resource positive or at least at resource parity, you know? Feels like this is fundamentally a math game. Every placement has to be net resource gain. Yeah, that's sort of what I'm thinking, right? And I can see that I'm just not getting that over and over. So, like, here's some issues with the sequencing, right? So if you put down a Toxin Scrubber, but, oh. So you put down a Toxin Scrubber, and it's outside of the power range, and you slap down an Irrigator on top of it. Wait, I fundamentally have misunderstood something. I thought if your, I thought if your Irrigator, if your green stepped outside of the power area, it didn't work. Okay, I've been dealing with not perfect information. I'm going to restart again. For whatever reason, when I did the tutorial, I was under the assumption that if your toxin scrubber, right? Because you see how it has a footprint. If your toxin scrubber put down a green area that was outside of an area that was powered, you didn't get that. And that's not true hold on is this salvageable is this winnable
Okay. No, we're okay. Now, see, this is what I'm talking about. You need that one thing to click. You get that one thing to click. Invested 150, I got 174 back. Well, ish. 174 ish back. Then, nope. Okay, I don't know if I can keep going here, but I'm confident. Yeah, like that was bad. I'm confident. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on. Hold on, everybody. I think I got it now. I just didn't understand how things worked. And now I understand how things work. <laughs> Any questions? Wait. This looks like a big old ravine. Oh, it is. So where do I want to start? Feels like my water is bad, like really bad on this map. What I'm understanding is this game's kind of like surviving high school. You just need a clique. Oh, Gunner. Question, how do things work? I don't understand it well enough to explain it. <laughs> All right, so I always feel like this is probably correct. I think this is always correct. And then what we do is we do one of these. And we do one of these. I'm doing it again. Already doing it again. I'm doing the thing where I'm trying to make it perfect. Surge! Hundred and fifty. Actually, if I do, let's do one hundred and fifteen for now. See, there we go. There's a water source there, too. Easy game for babies. Well... <laughs> Just realized that's another water source in the corner there. Uh, that's probably important to put. I don't know if I get 50 back from this. Let's find out. So I'm at 686. And this puts me to... It's not quite free, but it didn't cost me a full 50. Ninety two, ninety seven, one oh seven, one eleven, one thirteen.
169. Oh my god. Let's do this. It's all coming together, my friends. All right, so if I do this, hopefully there's enough water pressure that things actually work here. Wait, does that do anything for me? So if I do this, hold on, let's start with this instead. Quick math thing. When you use the fertilizer, the one that makes things green, that plus number has already accounted for the 50 you spend to place it down. Does it? So you think that's netting on top of it? That wasn't my assumption. Wow, that just like completely intersects all of the water, but I don't need that water pressure anymore. Maybe this is good. What does this do? What does this do? It doesn't do anything. It lets me put power right there. I don't need that. Yes. Okay. Oh, wow. So that's netting on top of the irrigator. That's big. That's very big. All right. So we're like here. There. I think I'm getting, once again, too lost in the weeds. So I don't need that. I can only go back one step. Heck. That was perhaps a little clunky. Far too much sarcasm. What's up, friend? Thank you for the 49. You know what? Let's just slap it, pop it down anyways. Hundred and seventy eight. That's one of the bigger ones I've seen yet. Designer do full coverage sneaks through even if you know it's not always the path to success. I can't help it. I can't. Joe's like, it's not too late to go gardener. <laughs> She's not wrong. All right, so now I have this really challenging task of I have to somehow get water up in here, you know? I mean, I guess I haven't covered this yet either. So let's, let's get the easy W's first. So I don't think this work works the way I want it to. No, it definitely doesn't. So there's that high ground there, but so what? If I do this, do I even need the water? Do I even need a water pump here? I think I can still do this. I can do... No, I cannot. Okay, hold on.
plus 94. Eighty-three percent. We're getting there. We're getting somewhere. Feeling winnable. Things are starting to feel winnable. To ignore trying to fill that patch in. So give me a second here before I right like this is super challenging. So if I do this, what's up, kits? If I do this, it lets me put another power thing there. So that may have actually been bad. I haven't quite figured out the optimal strategy for these um, these thingies yet. I think I've lost again, but I think I'm getting it. I think I'm getting somewhere. Wait. Oh. Oh! My God, actually, never mind. I think. I think a hundred percent wasn't what I wanted it to be. <laughs> what does a hundred percent mean in that context? This isn't even close to a hundred percent coverage. Increase the greenery in this valley. A hundred percent of my goal, but like. What does 100% of an in... I'm... Okay. I... I have been making... I have been making some assumptions in terms of what the game has been trying to tell me. I've been doing some mental calculations without knowing all of the numbers. Alright, I digress. So the first step... In any restoration endeavor is to restore water and plant life. To begin with, increase the greenery in this valley. Gotcha. Once the backbone of the ecosystem is thriving, your next step is to increase the diversity of growing plants. Introduce finbos, wetlands, forests. You'll also need to pay attention to the local climate. Ah... <gasps> Hydroponium. Create a wetland. Must be built on an irrigator near water and on low ground. What's an irrigator? Must be built on an irrigator. I can't click on that gunner because the um because of the way the game is set up. Alright, what are you? Beehive. Swarming bees pollinate nearby flowers and greeneries, creating finbo flowers. Is a finbo a real thing, chat? What's a finbo? Bees! Oh, oh my god. Oh, it's so cute. Wait, what's this now? Solar amplifier. Focuses sunlight, allowing for the starting of a controlled burn. A finbo is a Finnish himbo. That's fair. Finbos is Afrikaans. Fine bo I don't know how to do that. Fine plants is a small belt of natural shrubland or heathland vegetation located in the Western Cape and Eastern Cape provinces of South Africa. Hi, James. Good morning, James. It's Saturday. You don't stream on Saturdays. It's today Friday? What's happening? It's April 1st. Is this a joke? <laughs> I'm curious. <laughs> Good morning? Hello? James, explain yourself. 
James was playing the Arena Open and then April Fool's Minecraft update. Oh. Some kind of joke raid, eh? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome. We are playing a cozy new game called Terranil. You don't have second Friday? I guess not. Get pranked. I have been so pranked. Hey, this game is cozy. I want to hang out and just have a cozy good time with everybody. So come on in. Feel free to ask any questions if you want. And if you're not already, please go follow my friend James. James is delightful. So the point of this game is we are in a environmental wasteland and using our brain and a shocking amount of math. Look at these leaves. Are these leaves or bugs? These might be bugs. I don't know. Anyways, using our brain and some math, we have to make it pretty. Those are bees, but I only made bees over here. See? The beehive. Isn't it pronounced co in Canada? That is fair. Oh, and because I didn't have all the greenery there, that was not as efficient as it otherwise could have been. I understand. All right, so I can burn thing. Focus sunlights, allowing for the starting of a controlled burn. Let's do it over here. I don't know what this does. Fires can be, oh, it can only be started in Finbos or Tundra. Pew. Oh, oh, geez. Oh, 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 oh. What part of that was controlled? <laughs> okay. Arboretum uses nutritious ash to create a forest. Can only be built on a burnt building husk. Oh, never mind. I'm a genius. Oh, so I need a, a certain threshold of Finbo. I need a certain threshold of forest. Minus 66, but it takes me over the threshold I need. Okay, we'll do that later. Um, so now I need to somehow write. I understand. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Everything is fine. Creates wetland. Must be built on irrigator near water and on low ground. So hold on. Oh. So I need to fill all three of these bars separately, right? So if I do this now. Okay. And if I do this. Oh. This is very cozy. Yo, this game is so cozy. Okay, so that's operating at a negative. This is giving me a positive 31. 22. Alright, so here's my... Oh my god, there's geese! Oh my god. 
Oh, I didn't put it on the lowland though. Crap. <clears throat> Wait, let's go back. There's an undo. All right, so if I do positive 22, the goal here was to create more wetland, you know? Like this. And now I've unlocked the research center. Reduces the cost of some buildings and unlocks the ability to manipulate the region's climate. Constructing a research center makes primary reclamation buildings cheaper. Now that you've learned the basics of restoration, you need to begin to address the regional climate. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. The climate is defined by these attributes. Right now, we're only interested in humidity. But in the future, this will change. Climate thresholds. Reaching certain, certain thresholds of attributes will have broad effects on the environment. This game has looked like it could have come out of Climate Jam. Possibly. Love the undo button. You can only undo one step, Sarah. Wow. Okay. So I want fungi in the forests. Salmon. I love salmon. Water lilies. Oh my god. The rains begin. All right. Growing conditions. Buildings that grow plants like the irrigator or beehive are also affected by regional climate attributes. So the irrigator creates greenery by watering nearby clean soil. Generating, okay. So the irrigator has an ideal humidity of between 30 and 70. Is that what it's trying to tell me? Many buildings modify the climate sli slightly, but some, like the cloud cedar, change it significantly. Cultivating the right climate is an important step in your reclamation journey. Good luck. Oh my god, the excavator only costs 50 now? Use surrounding water and ocean to encourage cloud formation and increase ambient humidity. Fungi in the forest. Fire in the sky. <laughs> don't, I don't know where that came from. So if I wanted to, oh my goodness, the footprint is smaller now too. So, geez, okay. So my goal here, what is my goal here? What's Mr. T's girlfriend's name? It's April, fool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to figure out where to go next. I don't like that this corner is all gray, and I don't like that this corner is also all gray. I really want to try and extend some water out to there. So what are the constraints that we know? You can only build power on rocks. You can only build rocks next to water. So I need to think of some way to walk water all the way over there, but it's really awkward because, wait, is it really awkward?
So I believe that's going to destroy all of the greenery around it. So if I did this, what happens? Let's test it. Then, you don't have to connect to an existing river. You can drop, make a trench and drop a water source. How did I not put that together? Oh my God, you're absolutely right. Wow, yeah. Yeah, you sure can, eh? Holy moly. Literally just make a canal, forehead. If it were me, I would simply make a canal. Now, can I take advantage of this somehow? I don't think I can. But that's fine, because once I have that, then I can do other ones later. Okay. Okay. Everything here is now suddenly so much more interesting. I'm trying to now minimize the uh, the impact. Whatever. Now, hold on. Before I get two I've got some I got some money still. Oh my god. Yeah, okay. Look at this! Oh my god, and now they got flowers? Oh, that's so cute. Hello? And we got bonuses for ideal conditions. Speaking of ideal conditions, I need more bees! <laughs> All right, so now I want to do the same thing over here. Ooh. <laughs> oh, this game is just so chill. But I don't want to burn all the Finbo down. Wait, can I hit some of this with these too? Oh my God, I can. Oh, right at the very end. I understand. Okay, hold on. I'm learning. I'm, we're, we're all learning together here, my friends. Oh, I put it right... Wait. So I put it too far back, which meant I couldn't actually reach... With the water supply I needed to put in there. Alright, so let's try this again. Pew! Alright, step two. Water. Step three, rocks.
All right, so I need to make another wetland. I need to make another finbo, and then I think I'm almost done here. So if I make this a, a beehive, that's finbo, done. If I go over here and I hit this one with the hydro pump, where'd it go? That's done. And then if I do this, bam! There we go, I'm doing it! With plant life and climate reestablished, the final step is to construct an airship by recycling your buildings. As you remove your presence, introduce fauna to be the new custodians of this ecosystem. Can we make it rain? We can. We can if we just add a little bit more humidity. That's plus 4%. That's plus 6%. Plus 1%. Plus 8. Plus 9. Ooh, plus 11%. Here's our little ferns on the riverbank now. Oh my god, look at them. I don't... I... So... At greater than 70%, it'll start to rain. I don't know if we want it that humid, though. Ah, a little bit of rain is a treat, though. There we go. Let's go to 73%. Whoa... Wait, wait, hold on. When it rains, I just get bonus points? Okay, rain, maybe OP. This is literally nature is healing right now. What <laughs> should tell scientists about rain? Yo, guys, this is big. Get me a scientist on the phone. Now we just need salmon? Well, isn't it... I don't know. Isn't it bad to have 100% humidity? Obviously, it has, you know, cool-looking goals and whatever, but I feel like maybe that's not ideal. Rain OP, finally something Victoria can be good at. I could try and hit them with more humidity. We'll see. This is plus 9%. Okay, I hit the water lily blossom. Alright, we now have salmon. All right, salmon. Oh, look at them little jumpities. Tab the third. Airship allows for the construction of the airship with materials recycled from other buildings. This will be my airship island. Oh. The recycling silo recycles other buildings and stores a portion of their cost. The recycling drone 
travels along rivers to collect recycled materials from loading docks. Loads recycled material from the surroundings. Wait. Loads recycled materials from the surrounding buildings and silos to the recycling drone. Okay. Allows the recycling drone to travel up and down waterfalls. Oh, that's so funny. We made a little staircase. Hello. Okay. Loads recycled materials from silos. So. Oh. Can I reach that one? Yes. So what happens here? A little drone goes down the river. Ah! So, I'm now starting to think my rivers are going to have to connect. Do I need to grab everything? So the goal of the recycling silo is to hit things that are... Okay, so hold on. So if I do like this, right? Does the recycling silo recycle a previous recycling silo? No, it doesn't. But if I do something like this... starting to understand this game is so cozy this game is so cozy humidity is relative 100% means the air is bearing as much water vapor as it can at the current temperature and pressure it's also the dew point where liquid water will start forming on surfaces as it condenses to airborne okay okay what have I unlocked now the Animal Observatory allows use of sonar ping to encourage animal species to move into a habitat that is appropriate for them. Please, somebody, won't you move into this forest? The final step, as recycling progresses, is the reintroduction of animals. New animal species will help maintain the ecosystem long after your buildings are packed away. Animal species need to be scanned for. Open the scanning panel here. Use the animal portraits to switch between animals to get a hint about where each of them lives. Oh no. Use this button to scan for the selected species. Each scan will give you information. You'll need to find three suitable habitats for at least three animal species. Good luck. This grazer lives in herds on wide open grasslands. Oh, hold on. This small amphibian lives in the reeds of the wetlands near the finbows. This large caniforms domain is a forest which contains a beehive and is on a hill. This web-footed waterfowl rests in a large lake when it's not flying. So hold on. Wait, can I only have one of these? Scan for duck. Oh my god, I found a goose.
This industrial rodent builds its home on a river near a forest. Oh my god. Oh, I understand. So because I have enough criteria for this, what do you mean outdated? Did I not do it? Wait, it worked each time. Okay, so I don't need three successful scans. Do I not need three successful? I don't understand. Maybe that's good enough. Maybe as soon as it's unlocked, it's fine. You need three animals. Sure, but I don't need... Once I get a check mark, I'm fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. This predator prowls in a forest near to a source of prey. Okay, so I don't have a source of prey there. Lives in the reeds and wetlands, wetlands near the finbos. Aha. Frog! Oh my god, look at his little face! Alright, so I have goose and beaver and frog. Hello! So I'm going to assume that that was perfect, and now I just need to keep unpacking my stuff. Get more if you'd like. More animal friends. Oh my god. I do like more animal friends. So give me a second here. I want to slap a beehive on that one. Because if I put a beehive there. Then in theory I should be able to get the bear or no? Is a forest which contains a beehive and is on a hill. Oh, I don't think I'm on the hill. Let's see. Shoot. Okay. I do not have appropriate bear domain. Wide open grasslands. Oh, wait, 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 I got a plan. So if I do this, right, if I scan for some deer here, I can then scan for wolf here. I have everything but bear. All right, uh, let's start trying to pack some stuff up here. So it does look to me, however, like I need... Like, I need sources of water here. I don't quite understand how I'm going to do this. And I guess this works. Boo! It would appear that this, in fact, did not work. If I do, hold on, if I do this, then I can make it work. Please hold.
There we go. There we go. Finally, I want to try and connect. I think this works the way I want it to. Oh, I missed. These rocks. These rocks, though. So that's all connected. Uh, you know what? Maybe I don't need to get up into that very tippity top corner. <clears throat> right? Pack it on up. Let's get ready to hit that old dusty trail. So you found his green thumb? Yeah, I was struggling in the beginning, but like I said, sometimes you just need to wait for a video game to click, right? Because <sighs> once it does, you feel like a genius. Oh my goodness. It's a little lock system. That's so cute. No, the salmon are stuck in it. Ah, the worst. I like that it's giving us great big arrows and be like, hey, please pack up the following. Wait. Oh, it's waiting for me. <laughs> So rain is a great source of passive income? Yeah. Well, well, well. Don't forget the drone. Wasteland reclaimed. I love these buttons. Need to figure out what appreciate means. Oh, camera pan? Little beavers!
phenomenal. Absolutely fantastic. All right, give me a second, friends. All that rainfall made me really have to pee. <laughs> I'm going to take a short bio break and let's try the next map after. Oh my god, actual screensaver? Chivo in the bottom corner. Very funny. <clears throat> All right, I'll be right back. Hello. Do I not have the music on? I turned the music down. Is that a mistake? Is the music a vibe in this game? Oh, the soundtrack. Okay. Normally, the music in a game is so loud, I just instinctively turn it down, like, as soon as I start. Welcome to the desolate island. One second, friend. Yeah. Joe brought me a bit of that throat goo. <clears throat> Did I? I just realized Combat Wombat and Far Too Much Sarcasm, respectively subscribed for 47 and 49 months. Did I not say hi and thank you to the two of you? My apologies. You got this game on release day? It was like three days ago? Heck yeah, Magical Attack Gecko. Let's go to the tropical biome. I did? Okay. I was gonna say, it's pretty rare for me to not thank subs, but I also didn't remember doing that. Okay, well thank you to the both of you. Twice, in fact. <laughs> Rebuilding an island ecosystem is a unique challenge. Restoring life to the oceans is your number one priority. Using toxin scrubbers to clean seawater. Fewer river networks means you'll need to use the monorail infrastructure. Pardon? You'll need to begin by cleaning the surrounding oceans and reintroducing plant life. Toxin scrubbers are integral as they cleanse both land and sea. 
Both greenery and clean ocean contribute towards your goal. Climate manipulation is possible from the outset. Monorail, aka the Canal of Trains. Is that true? Where are my canal judges at? <clears throat> I would argue, I would argue at the top of the council of canal judges, we probably have Ink Slayer and Gunner. Other people can appoint themselves as well. Ink Slayer says that in fact the monorail is the canal of trains. Oh no. Duck has appointed themselves to the the the, the committee as well. Monorails, I hear they put Brockway, Ogdenville, and North Haverbrook on the map. <laughs> Is that so, Pix? <clears throat> All right. All right, somebody quick, sing the monorail song. Oh, it's not a committee, it's a cabal? The canal cabal? The first monorail prototype was created in Russia in 1820. <laughs> you don't say! The Brew Crew Canal Cabal. Oh, God. Aminimals. <gasps> Penguin! Sorry. Oh, I wonder if that's going to bug me. Tom Scott recently did a monorail video. Dang. Turtle. I digress. Oh, my ship has arrived. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> All right. Look at these murky waters. Oh, it's raining outside. Yeah, we're going to need an org chart for this whole uh, canal crew, if I may. Ivy overgrowth. So what we're looking for is a temperature of 35. Wait, boss on the rock faces. Humidity of 50, but a temperature under 10. So I should try and get my, my humidity up first. Okay. I'm going to stop by and say that North 100 is the best Magic the Gathering content on YouTube. Thank you so much, CD Mac. I really appreciate that, friend. Is this game timed? Nope. This game is just vibes. <clears throat> Alright, what corner do we want to start in? Let's start here. No. No, it doesn't feel right. Let's start here. Cleanse nearby wasteland. So, hold on. If I cleanse... What does zero mean in this case? Sorry, I don't understand. Oh! Okay, yeah, this soundtrack is actually adorable. So let's go just a little bit. Oh, I can't construct two more turbines if I want to unlock the... Yes, okay, hold on. So if I do... Nope, not yet. Hundred and forty seven, hundred and fifty two. Then I hit you with one of these. Sha sha. One forty six, one fifty four, one fifty three. 
Kevlar Giraffe. Hi, friend. Thank you so much for 34 months. Happy Saturday. I posted about a trial shift I did three weeks ago. I've now quit my job and will do another trial shift for them on Monday. If it doesn't work out there, I'm taking a break for a month. I'll get myself a new job in May. Right on, Kevlar Giraffe. Thank you for the update. Obviously, good luck. There we go. So now we have... Oh, what the... This is new. The Mineralizer crystallizes the salt in the ocean to create rock. So that means if I want more... Go from the shore. So hold on. Reclaim more ocean tiles to unlock. Oh, I'm not really prioritizing the oceans yet, am I? <clears throat> oh, hold on. Hold on. All right, let's let's focus on this ocean stuff then, you know? Oh, I can do it anywhere. Oh. Let's focus on the goals given here, shall we? So if I go like here. The ocean is the body of salt water that covers approximately 70.8% of Earth <clears throat> and contains 97% of Earth's water. Gunner. I know you just Googled this, but there's actually a fascinating new... I, it could be a theory. I was reading a science article about this before. That there could be underground reserves of water that actually make up more water being held in the core of the Earth than there is water in the oceans on the surface of Earth, which is fascinating. The theory... The theory here is that there are spongy rocks that hold the water in sort of in a in a like um not liquid state basically i don't know look i'm not a scientist i just read an article about one i just thought that was so cool so it's like we already think you know where all the water is but turns out we don't no it's not ice it's not even that it's spongy it's more that it's chemically incorporated yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Like hydrated minerals, basically it's not in a solid liquid or, ga or gaseous state. It is, it's held within basically this like this spongy rock. So I need to, while continuing to not die, that's 84, there you go. The water is part of the makeup of the rock, basically? Yeah. The scientific term would be hydrates. Cool. The rock is called ringwoodite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that people are Googling it now. Isn't that cool? I think that's so cool. Gunner has moved away from water facts and is now giving us Google facts. 
Google was founded on September 4th, 1998 by computer scientist Larry Page and Sergey Brin while they were PhD students at Stanford. Oh. What have we unlocked? We have unlocked the sand bank. Creates a small island on which a building can be placed. Oh, well, well, well. So my assumption is... What is my assumption? That's what I thought. I want to do stuff like that. Hundred and nineteen, hundred and twenty. So I could get like a plus ninety up here. Gets me pretty good dense coverage too. So hold on. There's eighty six. There's an eighty nine. Ninety one. I like this. Because then eventually, once this all spreads a little bit better. Ah, that <laughs> that flashing right, that flashing light. Pardon me, was very not chill. This is zero. This is minus forty nine. I guess it's counting. Oh, well, my English just fell apart there. I guess it's counting the amount of um, ocean reclamation. This is one fifty nine. One hundred. Plus 113. Oh, we're doing it. The next step is to increase biodiversity, restore beaches, mangroves, ooh, mangroves, and tropical rainforests. You'll also need to use the monorail to transport coral polyps to the sea. Oh my goodness. I'm not done with you yet, please. All right, what do we got going on here? The hydroponium creates a wetland, must be built on an irrigator near the water and on the low ground. The cloud cedar. Use surrounding water and ocean to encourage cloud formation and increase ambient humidity. So our first goal is we want, we just want to increase the humidity. <gasps> Crabs on the beach. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Oh, we have so many things I want to make here. And we also have the combustor. Burn surrounding vegetation, increase atmospheric temperature. More carbon dense vegetation, more effective. Okay. So hold on. Let's let's get a little bit more going on here real quick, you know? Did you know that there are approximately 4,500 species of crab worldwide? I did not know that, Gunner. 
Thank you for subscribing to Crab Facts. Not at all what I wanted. Crabs have evolved into existence five separate times. That's through the process known as carcinization, right? This looks like a great place for wetland. Ooh. This also looks like it'd be good wetland. Actually, give me a second here. I could get way more wetland. Just give me one sec. I'm being a little bit... overly thorough again. But like, so what? Ooh. Can I afford to go just a little bit further? So if I go 25... I'm gonna greed. Can't yet, but I, if I do this first, and I think I'm laughing. All right, maybe I greeted too hard on perfect coverage there, but on the plus side, Look at that coverage, right? What lands? Now that we've unlocked the, what are you? The salinator increases the salinity of the surrounding areas, allowing the mangroves to flourish. Oh, it's too low. So the temperature needs to be it's too cold still. Okay. So we need to start affecting the climate here a little bit if we want that to work. But we got really good cleanliness coverage so far, right? So it looks like I need to... We want to increase the humidity first. So now we have moss on the rocks. What else have we unlocked? Jellyfish return if we get the temperature up. Let's try hitting one more of the big humidity changes here. That's plus 16%. 69%. I'm going to be curious to see when I can actually get like rivers flowing in here because so far it looks like I don't get rivers. All right, one more. I think if we get one more big one down, that should be it. That's only 6%. 13% gets me to 80% humidity. What what humidity do I want? I want 99% humidity. Okay. I have a pump. Oh my god, I have a pump. All right, you know what? Ignore me. Definitely for whatever reason did not see that. <laughs> Thirteen percent. If I get one more out here, 
96%. That's not 99 at all. There we go. 100% humidity. So now we've got water lilies, moss on the rock face, ferns on the riverbank. Now what we need to do is we need to get a little bit of temperature going. Ferns surrounding vegetation. More dense vegetation means more dense burnage. Do you think though? I don't think the wetland counts as dense vegetation. Do you? Can't burn a wetland. All right. All right. Up to six degrees. Up to ten degrees. This is starting to get a little spooky. The Latarium captures sand to form beaches and dunes. Must be built on a scrubber. Plus 17. Oh, yeah. Shade Cloth Pillar. Pillars connected in triangles form shady areas where tropical forests thrive. Must be built on the side of a cliff. Oh. I'm very close to losing here. Oh, my goodness. Now that we have beach, look at the waves. Right on. What's the loss condition? You have zero resources to spend and therefore you cannot continue. Oh. You can turn some of your wetlands into mangroves. Stunning. Your turn with coffee, and there's a pretty new biome. Speaking of coffee, my love brought me one. Thank you, Jojo. Ooh. Plus 104. Let's go. All right, so we've now reached... Oh, I overshot. That, that's fine. All right. Now we want the salinator. We want more sand. No. Sand. It's minus 25. Okay. Minus 8. Plus 51. Oh, mac and cheese would be amazing, Jojo. Okay, one more big sand patch. Reach 50% biodiversity. Pillars connected in triangles form shady areas where tropical forests thrive. Must be built on cliffs. So hold on. So if I did something like this to this. Oh. <gasps> <clears throat> oh. 
Oh, it's so pretty. So can I connect to existing triangles or no? Oh, you can see very, very loosely. You can see there's a little, um, oh, you can expand it. Oh, okay. Uh, you can see there's, when you place it down, you see there's like a little, like right around there. Look there, there's a green radius line. Oh, sorry. Ivy overgrowth, migratory birds have returned. We're doing it, we're stabilizing. You love the O, oh, that's a good puzzle game right there, right? So how does this cost me negative area? All right, so that should be enough. Nice, that's enough jungle coverage. Now we just need a little bit more sand. All right, that's enough sand now. Good, good, good. So now what we need is coral reef. Monorail node. Nodes in range of another connect to allow the movement of buildings along the monorail network. From where? From where to where though? I just don't understand. Where am I trying to get to and from with these? So it told me that monorails are needed if I want to put coral in the ocean, right? Use the monorail node ability one more time. Move a building from in range of this monorail on the road to further out. Well, now I've got this everywhere anyways, so <clears throat> I think what I want it to... Okay, hold on. So now I want to move this building. I want to move it to here. Good job, me. The Coral Laboratory. Coral grows corals from polyps, which can be moved with a monorail into clean ocean. Must be built on an irrigator. Temperature cannot grow. Okay, so I need it to be slightly warmer still. So hold on. What temperature do you want to be? Um, does that mean I've made it too warm? What does this look like? Or is it still too cold? Looks like it's probably still too cold. Let's make it warmer. Okay, now it's three degrees warmer. I think we're getting closer, still not there. 
Okay, that's worth another two degrees. Ooh, four degrees. All right, so we've reached 20 degrees. Where? There. Crabs on the beaches. Oh my goodness, where are they? Chronicler, what's up, friend? Thank you for the 20. Look! Hello! Oh, goodbye. Very sneaky. All right, I want one more degree of change. Carsonization. Okay, 25 degrees now. Oh, my humidity is too high. I'll never get jellyfish. I went too low on sand. That's fine. We can always get more sand later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll fix it. We'll fix it. One thing at a time, my dear friends. All right, so now. What am I missing? Temperature, ideal conditions. Oh, must be placed on an irrigator. Um... You mean like this? Hold on. Click on this, select a building to move, and now I can put it in places. Plus nine coral. What did I just do that for? No. <laughs> All right, let's get some monorail going over here now too. So monorail, monorail, monorail. on the monorail, click on the building, eat it into the sea. This is the leftovers of the planet after I play a different game? How dare you? I am the world's greatest gentle builder. Okay, let's clean up some of these beaches. That's 38. Plus five. All right, so here are my goals. One, this is gonna become sand, right? Must be built on top of a toxin scrubber. Okay, so that's gonna fix the beaches. And then we're going to grab the monorail here. We're going to throw this over into the sea. Oh, sorry. Build it there. And then move that. It's plus 18. Plus 52. Yeah. Look at all these reefs. It's 
just want to... I think it'd look really good if I could finish off the beach, like, here. It's minus 50, though. I don't know if I can afford that. There's 35 there. Just need one or two more. <clears throat> I haven't been really paying attention to realize that um, I'm actually kind of resource poor if I'm not careful. Bad things might happen. Also kind of tempted to get just a little bit more, more temperature. stuff. Just a little bit more temperature up. Can't quite get to there, can I? Get those sun those thunderstorms. So I need 10 more degrees, huh? So that's three. That's three. This is, oh, what? Oh, that's, um. all right, that's six degrees. I just burned some of my jungle though. I did, that's okay. I can regrow it later. And finally, I just need one, two more degrees. Three is kind of like two. There! Thunderstorms! All right, so that'll re... <gasps> is it cleaning all the ocean, too? Oh, my God, it is. All right. <clears throat> Time for healing. This is such a big threshold when you hit it. There we go. Jungle's fixed. Now, I just have to get a little bit more, a little bit more coral reef. I can't quite reach that. That's fine. Plus 40. There it is. Special delivery. What's that raincoat bear? Oh, going to come to Victoria in the summer. Check out some of my cafe recommendations. Heck yeah. All right. Monorails can then be utilized for recycling. So connect your airship to the monorail network. Reintroduce marine and terrestrial animals to help maintain the ecosystem when you leave. <clears throat> Don't mind if I do. Construct one more recycler station. All right, let's put ourselves down right here on the beach. You love this game? As Azrul? So do I, friend. So do I. All right, let's, go, let's try and find some animal friends. Beach-dwelling reptile lives on an island where it can retreat into its shell. I can't. Oh, I don't have the nature scanner yet. Any turtles on this island? Wait. 
Lives on an island where it can retreat into its shell. Requirement on an island. On an island and the beach. So hold on. I need to find a sandy island. Or what if I just simply made a sandy island? Hi, little buddy. There we go. Turtle! I love you. Look at you! Look at its little face. The whole map is an island. I mean, technically everything's an island by that definition. Is that a turtle or a tortoise? Good question. Tortoise. You win this round. Next. This unusually shaped creature glides in the ocean near river estuaries and coral reefs. Nailed it in. Oh, it's a manta ray! Where are you? Oh my god. Do you know that the manta ray is one of my favorite aquatic thingies? Oh, look at the fish in the coral reef. It goes manta rays and then seahorses are out there as well. Big fan. This colorful bird makes its home in lush forest canopies beneath the clear skies. So I have to, I'd have to clear the, um, okay, I understand. I have to clear the mesh. This water combs, wait, this wader combs for food amongst the sand of the beaches and the mud of the wetlands. Intersection of beach and wetland. Need at least 10 wetland. Ten beach, ten wetland. Oh, those are mangroves. Mangrovies. That's still mangrove, isn't it? <sighs> Must be built on an irrigator near the water. Okay, so hold on. Irrigator. Become wetland. Have I still not found it? Oh, because there's a salinator every time I make it that I understand. It's... Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. Here we go. Found it. It's a flamingo! Hi, little buddy. Look at you. This aquatic predator lives in both dense coral and the waters of the mangrove.
on a rail. Time to make some mangrove coral. Way ahead of you, Chronicler. <gasps> Jellyfish! Perfect game. I have found the shark. The reef shark. Hello. This large, pelagic mammal swims in the deep waters of the ocean, far from land. Is it a whale? Wait, what have I found wrong? Requirement met deep ocean. No land and range. I need deeper ocean? Requirement met and at least 20 ocean tiles. No land within range. Partially met deep ocean. Whale! Hello, whale friend. Where are you? Show me whale. Show me whale. Whale is camera shy. All right. Time to start tearing stuff down. Connect to the monorail network to send drones to recycle from areas at recycling beacons must be placed adjacent to the airship. The rock hopper moves a rock from one location to another. That's so funny. All right. Well, let's start grabbing some stuff here, shall we? Recycles other buildings and stores a portion of their costs. Oh, I can't put it in the wetland, huh? Can't quite reach there. Oh, it takes the monorail with it. Well, crap. All right. Okay. Okay. Noted. <laughs> So how does this work? Works like that, eh? Floom. The mineralizer. All 
All right, so now we're connecting to everything here. So I want to try and... It's actually much more challenging than I thought it was. You have to put the monorail on top of rock nodes? Yep. Be hilarious if you ran out of resources while trying to recycle. Yes, hilarious. Got a bit of uncovered jungle now. Try and find our birdo. No buildings within range. Okay. We're not quite far enough yet. How are we enjoying this game? It's awesome. Move along home. This is like the perfect weekend vibe game. Sending our monorail network out to collect stuff. So yeah, we have to deconstruct it sort of backwards, which is interesting. Finding all the animals is such a special moment. It's been, it's been pretty cozy, certainly. All right, can I reach that fan somehow? Right, so if I do this, right? And then I get the monorail up to... Get the monorail up to about here. Oh, did that not connect? Derp. There we are. I should be able to... I can't quite reach buckets. If I do that, hold on. Nice. There we go. Okay. So the monorail gets into there. And that comes and picks up all this stuff. Wait one second. That should be within range. So I do that now. There we go. There we go. I missed one of the animals on my first run through the first level. Now I'm sad about it. Yeah, I missed the bear on the first one, Avery. And I'm thinking about that too. Do you have to move the rocks on which the monorails are stored? No, I think you have to move a different one, which makes it a little bit trickier. Well, the bear is so specific, right, Avery? But then again, like, if you're a completionist, going back and, and playing through a second time seems kind of cozy, too. All right, we've got our bird. Hello! Look at our little tropical birdos. Oh, did we finally get to see a whale yet? No. Really hoping I'd get to see a whale before we were done here. All right. Let's just start unpacking everything in reverse. Buckets. Oh no, I missed that one too. Hello, I do math. Don't lie, Snurge. Don't lie.
parents are a real pest in the, oh, how do I pronounce it? The hag, the hog, where flock have resisted, captured and flourished in the sides of the building. Amazing. That's one of those words that I don't say out loud very often. I missed the node again? How? But like, actually how though? So do you have to always pick the furthest one? I don't understand. It doesn't pick up other monorail nodes, so you have to do it backwards? Okay. It's the hog. So I think you have to remove a monorail node one at a time. Den hog. You want to try it that way? How'd I do? All right, let's just watch this for now. <clears throat> soft G. Hog. I don't know how to, I don't know, I don't know what soft G means. <laughs> well, I'll just remove this one at a time. That's fine. It prioritizes end of the line so you can place many at once, I guess. Soft G to me sounds like Hajj. <laughs> I think we're still going to make it, but still. Also, I have still yet to see my whales, and I'm very sad about that. Maybe the whales will show up when we're done. That's fair. Don't want to rush the whales, certainly. <gasps> a flamingo is flying. Wow. Oh. Buckets. Okay, I can reach that still. Well, I've got lots of resources, so we basically got this. I think I have to make one more. So pretty. We outie.
Oh, yeah, you know we're going to appreciate. Show me my whales, please. I don't ask for much. Do you want to spoil your start for the next level? Yeah, no worries, Avery. That's my favorite curve as when I stream. Step one, people are like, yo, this game is sweet. Step two, they're like, this game is so cool, I'm going to buy it myself. And then step three, they're like, I can't keep watching. Because <laughs> now I'm playing this game and I don't want to be spoiled. Oh, there's more beach turtles on the south there too. You love to see it. <clears throat> you stuck on one of the last levels. I was trying not to show it, but when I was <laughs> failing <laughs> repeatedly. <laughs> On the first level, I was just like, oh no. Is this game too, like, too galaxy brain for me? Am I somehow too smooth brain for this very chill puzzle game? I don't play puzzle games on stream for a reason. <laughs> I was panicking. I was like, no, not like this. Don't be outsmarted by Terra Nil, Surge. You'll never live it down. The Dark Souls of chill games? Yeah. Still don't see any whales, which I'm very sad about. Am I the melon? Oh, no. Am I dumber than a sea cucumber? I can't handle this. <laughs> what if Dark Souls is a chill game? Hey! Absolutely can be. I've watched some speedrunners just absolutely vibe in that game. Where's my whale? <laughs> Bury me with my whale. <laughs> God, that's funny. All right. No whale sightings today. And now being in a tourist community on the island, that normally means you get your money back. But if you read the fine print, you'll notice that there's a no refund policy. Sorry, chat. All right. Next. Oh, pardon me. Oh, is this going to update and be green now? Yeah, nice. Wait, why does that only say 66% and 68%? Hold on. Climate threshold deceived, 7 out of 7. So 4 out of 4, 6 out of 6, 10 out of 11. That doesn't add up to 68% to me, but whatever. The polar area, there are 6 aminals, tundra, lichen, kelp, and forest. Oh, oh my goodness, locked. Oh, you can go back and play it again. Oh, well, 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 well. All right, to the volcanic glacier, my friends. That sounds both hot and cold. I imagine locked means there's another playthrough. You go back through and you do it again. And maybe there's a second opportunity to find our friend the bear. <gasps> Narwhal! 
Geysers and lava flows make this region perfect for geothermal power. You'll need to melt the polluted permafrost in order to clean the ground beneath. Solar amplifiers will help increase ambient, ambient temperature, ambient, ambient temperature and melt snow. Begin by using seismic detonators to cause fissures to erupt, bringing lava to the surface. Use geothermal plants and solar amplifiers to melt snow, allowing you to clean the ground beneath. Detoxify the polar ocean, as it also is a source of life. Our, oh man, what was the rhythm to that? Narwhals swimming in the ocean, causing a commotion because they are so awesome. It's more likely than you think. I'm trying to remember how that, like what the, um, the beats were to that, right? Good reference though, yeah. All right, toxicity. When you hear toxicity, does your mind immediately go to Britney Spears or System of a Down? What's the first sound that plays in your head when you see the word toxicity? System of a Down? <laughs> you think of social media? Well, Arclight. <laughs> Your mind goes to Twitch chat? Brutal. Wow. Wow. Have a good one, Delara. Create lava tiles. Okay. Seismic detonator. Uses resonance to excavate a small area. Will cause fissures in the range to erupt. Oh. Oh. Hey, question. What hot what what happens? What happens when lava and water touch? Oh. The heat purifies the water. How do I get power? Toxic scrubbing? No. Nah. Solar amplifier? No. Excavator? Excavate the lava? Okay, well, I guess I get that later. Now, do I need to cover it or do I need... Here, we're doing some more science here. What happens if I go right beside it? Nothing. Okay, so I do need to detonate it as well. Pew. The geothermal plant provides electricity and melts snow in a large area. Oh, it needs to be on the lava too. Now, right, you have to melt the area first. Fascinating. So what if I do, what happens if I do this? Does this work the way I think it does? Sorry, that's the noise that lava makes when it connects with water. If it's all lava, then I can't really start reclaiming anything here. Which is not ideal, if you ask me.
Now, if I do something like this, we're still learning. We're learning, we're testing. I believe this is what we call limit testing. Oh, did that, however, ruin my, ah, neat. Hold on, but if I do this. Oh my God, it's lunchtime. All right, so now I need to turn my alerts down. <laughs> Hi, Cuddly Kitty. What's up, friend? We are just having just an absolute vibe of a day right now. Welcome on in, everybody. This is like the coziest game ever. Welcome to a little bit of um, Plan B. Comma. Comma or colon? Plan B terraform. Wait. No, that's no plan B. I got... Sorry. Wow. Jeez. Derp. That's not the name of this game at all. <laughs> this is Terra Nil. Sorry. I, I'm actively terraforming and I forgot the name of the game. And I'm having just such a good time. Just such a cozy time right now. That was the game I played the other day. Look. They all kind of blend in with each other. <laughs> what were you streaming today? Thank you for stopping by. Cuddly Kitty can't join for hashtag tech reasons, but you get Ann Kitty. Well, welcome. Welcome on here, dear, in, dear friends. Part of me wants to eat lunch, and part of me just wants to keep playing this game. Joe's like, I swear, if you get hangry again, Surge. All right, that's fair. A lot of terraforming games out lately. You're here for it? Yeah, fair. Oh, the lava is so hot, it burns my stuff. Okay. Oh, oh, <laughs> Joe from the other room. Finish your lunch or no dessert. That means I get dessert, chat. All right, I tell you what, I tell you what. Let's go to the booth. Let's hang out. So here's my plan, friends. Let's chill for like 10 minutes. We'll hang out, talk about life, the universe, basically whatever you want. And that way I can focus on lunch. And I, I don't do that thing where, you know, you kind of eat, you kind of get distracted. Just take a break from what we're doing. We'll get back to the games. You had mochi donuts for breakfast? Now that's a breakfast. There we go. A little bit of tunes. Today's lunch. Peep this mac and cheese with bacon. Had for, for dinner after a long day. What kind? What's your go-to? I used to be only chicken, but then I started getting into the beef flank and meatball and I was like, yeah, all right. Raw beef and meatballs, classic, nice. I had mashed potato, meatball, cream sauce, and lingonberry jam for lunch. The classic Swedish lunch. Oh. All right. I'm going to open it up. AMA. If you're new, you want to get to know me. If you've known me for a bit and you want more info, hit me with whatever. Your go-to is beef, meatball, and ten with a couple of jalapenos and no cilantro. Fair. Fair. Favorite breakfast. I'm really boring when it comes to breakfast. My go-to, and this has been, God, for almost ten years now, just granola and yogurt. I'm not a, like, heavy breakfast kind of person. I'm not the type of person who's like, all right, four egg omelet sausage breakfast. Light breakfast, get the day started. Big lunch. 
I'm making barley por porridge lately. Sweet. What's my favorite lunch that Joe has got me this year? We had really fancy ribs for dinner. And then she took all the ribs and then like pulled the bone off because it's obviously hard to eat ribs on camera when you're streaming. And then mix the meat in with like mac and cheese or she's made quesadillas out of like leftover fried chicken and stuff like that. We got some good options. Oh, she surprised me with Hong Kong West for lunch one day too. Good stuff. She brings me good stuff. Hey, Seth says, thank you so much for that prime in nine months. I haven't had a sub in forever. Now you kind of want a sub sandwich now? Yeah. Thank you, friend. I appreciate that. Hello, cuddly kitty. It seems like you have overcame your technical difficulties. I like coffee, but I can't handle decaf. Any advice for finding good decaf coffee? Local roastery. Honestly, a place that is roasting in itself and that you enjoy the flavor is pretty solid. A lot of places don't offer a variety of decaf. You know, you might find a place that has half a dozen to a dozen different coffee offerings and then decaf. <laughs> but if you find like a good specialty roastery in your town, It'll be solid. It is kind of unfortunate that people don't get into decaf quite as hard as they get into the other kinds of coffee, but the better the place, the better the decaf will be as well. Ooh, using decaf for cold brew as well. Clever. My go-to, especially to like wind down in the afternoon after a stream, decaf cappuccino. That's like my, this is great. Hmm. Joe's writing down decaf cold brew as a, um, as like a chill summer drink. When I was pregnant, I had to settle for half calf to get good coffee. Good decaf is not a thing where you're at. That's unfortunate. Gonna be honest though, as somebody who has worked in coffee, I think people put even less effort into half calf than they do decaf. You got like caffeinated is probably your marquee product you're carrying. Decaf, you're like, fine, I guess we'll do an okay job of this because we have to. Half calf? You are not dialing in for half calf. Like, you will sit there and you'll agonize over pulling a good shot of espresso. And then you'll kind of dial in the decaf and you'll fix it if it's a problem. When it's half calf, you just shrug emoji. You're like, whatever. <laughs> this is like one of those kitchen secrets. You're like, oh no. Do you call a decaf cappuccino a decafuccino? And if not, why? I call it a decap, actually, Arclight. I just, because I, there's cap. I don't order a cappuccino. I order a cap when I go to a place and I just say decap. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> All right, pun foul. Here's a question. Is a portmanteau a pun? Because I don't think that was a pun. Wait, wait, it's not, but it can be. Go on, tell me more. Yeah, I suppose you can have an unfortunate consequence if you order a decap from a place. <laughs> wait, hold on, time out. A pun, also known as a paronomasia. A what now? 
is a form of wordplay that exploits multiple meanings of a term or of similar sounding words for an intended humorous or rhetorical effect. Paronomasia. I've never heard of that word before. I don't even think I've ever read it before. Joe wants more gunner facts. I just need you to know this. Mr. Surge, have you checked out Captain of Industry? It's my automation game of choice. I think I've seen it on like trailer day, but I don't think we've ever played it. 500 hours on the game though, dang. I'm trying to think of examples of where a portmanteau can also be a pun. I can't quite think outside of that box currently. A pun man toe, if you will. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. Thanks. I hate it. Well played. If you read something and your response is, oh God, it's probably a pun. Yeah, that's fair. What up, Zed? Punliness in direct proportion to... God. <laughs> Sorry. Punliness in relation to groanliness. Ugh. What do you call a slightly cool vegetable? A radish. Uh-huh. Oh, that was delicious. And now I've got just a little bit of focaccia as well. <laughs> Asp, that's very good. If there's a relationship between punliness and groanliness, then the power company just sent me a pun in the mail. That's unfortunate, but also very funny. Hey, thanks for hanging out while I had lunch, by the way. I really appreciate that. Give me one second. I'm going to pee and wash my hands, and let's get back to some video games. Be right back.
Hello. I return. Thanks so much for hanging out during lunch, everybody. Ready to get back to super chill video game times? Boop. All right. As the legends foretold. So what am I trying to do here? What are our goals? I want to get the temperature, the ambient temperature warm enough that the snow melts at zero. Okay. Auroras happen if we get our toxicity under 5%. Oh, I didn't realize this. Hey, check this out. When you hover over with the mouse, look up here. It actually shows you where your breakpoints are. That's great. Icebergs form if the temperature is under zero and the toxicity is under 25. So if I raise the heat too quickly before I clear the toxicity, I don't get icebergs. I'd like icebergs. And it doesn't look like the icebergs melt afterwards, which is kind of funny. Snowfall begins if the temperature is under five degrees. Oh, interesting. All right, let's see if I can't clear the toxicity first. So toxicity we clear by, I believe we get it by melting stuff without raising the temperature. Let's test. So if I do this, yeah, okay. But too much lava. So if I do this, this is gonna be big as well. Cool. Oh, my sound is gone. Pardon me. Do solar amplifiers melt the snow without raising the temperature? So you need a controlled burn, though. Hold on. Like, let's get down to the water, right? Can't quite reach there, so that means I want one of these. What are you? You are a freezes surrounding vegetation and liquids to lower the temperature. Oh, cool! So you can manipulate it. Oh, that's fascinating. Okay. Because I don't want to get too hot too quickly. This game is so good. <laughs> Did you know that? So it hasn't melted there yet. Okay, so let's do another depth charge here. The reason you take your workouts easy, you don't want to get too hot too quickly. A. <laughs> I'm excited to know that I can... That's what I'm looking for here. I'm excited that I can lower the temperature afterwards because I was a little bit worried about that at first, you know? Oh no, I didn't leave myself enough room to really get down into the ocean here. Yeah, 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 you'll be fine. Look at you panicking. It's not a good look. <clears throat> Our toxicity is down to 34%.
All right, let's get some more grass going in here, right? So if I do this, 83, 86, 87. <laughs> Just welcome to counting with surge. 108. Hope we count to exact numbers. That's all I do. That's why y'all watch me. Very good counter. Kind of my brand. I go all the way up to here. What is that, I wonder? I don't know. Presumably that was like an old building or something like that, maybe? Good counting is adjacent to my brand. What's that supposed to mean? How dare you? <laughs> oh, I just realized. Check out this cascading lava we're about to do. <clears throat> Oh, adjacent means next to. Thanks. Okay. Oh. <laughs> wow. All right. So we're up to two degrees now. Oh, the snow is all melted. Okay. So if I can get the toxicity just, just a little bit lower here. So if we go here, means in theory, this is all bad, right? Should be able to now go this way, and try and start filling in some of this too, right? 127. five. Almost. Are you supposed to have game audio? Is it just like mega quiet still? The game is very chill. It's very soft. But yeah, I could turn it up if you don't hear stuff. Thank you. Next, increase biodiversity by growing tundra on the highlands. Start fires to create ash on which to grow forests. Freeze lava flows to create rock fields to grow lichen. And use monorails to, cre cre to create kelp in the ocean. So now the first thing I want to do is I actually want to drop the temperature. I'd love to get icebergs. So I need to drop the temperature by 4 degrees. Okay. 
So let's go back to here. Oh, the radial excavator. Wild. Oh, you can make a hill with it. Oh, that's very cool. Minus five degrees if I put it there. Minus five degrees. So that gets me to minus two. What do I want? I want minus five. Wait, no. Sorry, I want icebergs. I just need one of these. Uh, let's put it here then. All right, now we have icebergs. Oh. Icebergs. Ahem. <clears throat> So what else do I need for low temperatures? So if now, if I heat it up to five degrees, okay. Now I don't see a rain, I do see a snowfall. So if it's colder than 5%, greater than 40% moisture and less than 20% toxicity, we get snowfall. This game does a pretty good job of solving the problems some games have where there's just a repetitive optimal layout. I think it's all the terrain in the way. Yeah, I mean, the fact that it's procedurally generated terrain means the replayability is probably pretty high as well, right? The world's longest abacus is 43.36 meters and was created by only education in Shanghai 2018. Fast, thank you, Gunner. Look at this snow globe. Creates the tundra range. Tundras only grow in sufficiently low humidity and high elevation. Must be built on an irrigator. So that would be up here, right? <clears throat> Alright, our tundra's done. That looks great, by the way. It's very pretty. So the boreal forest, in order to get forest, I need to create some ash first. It looks like it wants to be slightly hotter. So in order to do that, let's blow this up. is a little wasteful. I just want this really good coverage. Look at them clean ocean tiles. Oh yeah. So fresh and so clean. So I want a little, just a little bit of a fire over here. So my assumption is it's going to burn all of this, but let's find out. What do you mean invalid target? Nearby Tundra. Let's see if it burns up a hill or no, if it only burns down. That's exactly what I was hoping for. That's so perfect. So now, I get to do one of these. Oh, 
stunning. It's beautiful. And some of these as well. All right. So that's done as well. Now, lichen. Lichen. I have to somehow freeze lava. Cools lava in range, forming rocks. That should also drop the global temperature a little bit more. Yeah, okay. So, how to make lichen happen? Oh, I have to cool, I have to freeze more. Okay, I understand. Creates lichens on rocks in range. When moved via monorail into clean oceans, it grows kelp forests, but must be built on an irrigator. <clears throat> Hint, one algae greenhouse can create two biomes. Yeah, okay. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> Wrong button. Uh, I meant to use this one. There we go. How's it going, little black star? Chris! Hi, friend. Oh my god, 60 months? How? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's so long. Uh. Thank you for the 60 months, friend. Hey, that's a, that's a new rainbow bean. If you can, throw some hearts in chat. Love to see it. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to start making some monorail and trying to yeet these into the ocean, right? Yeet. I didn't discover the true power of monorails until the very end of the post game. They're so good. Oh! Oh, that's what that looks like. Ideal. Good. Oh my goodness, look! Hi, fish. Wow. Good stuff. All right, lots of clean water down here. Plus 53. Yeet! It's a good thing you got all these rocks. Yeah, no kidding, eh? So I need one more, one more good deposit here. So where is the next one of these snow globes? Is it this one? No, it's that one. All right. Let's keep making our way up the river here. Up the river, I mean up the river of lava.
Oh, that's the wrong building. Uh, I want to take this one. Well, seven, no, it's 25. There we go. <clears throat> all right, all biomes successfully achieved. Use your monorail system to recycle your buildings. As you do, introduce polar fauna back into the land. All right. So whomst we got? This herbivore searches beneath the snow for edible lichen and plants. Beneath the snow. All right. So if we want to make that work, we have to make it colder. This... Strigiform roots in boreal forests and soars open over the open tundra. So it should be right about here. Right, I have to make the, the structure first. I forgot. The animal observatory. Nailed it. Oh, the snowy owl! Ah, <gasps> look. Look at them. They're in the trees. Fantastic. All right. This vulpine predator is camouflaged in the snow and prowls the tundra. Okay, let's also remember snow. We have to make it colder. This tusk-bearing whale swims in cold ocean water under the ice. Okay, we need to make the water colder. From its home on the ice, this flightless bird takes to the ocean in search of fishes. And finally, this large predator wanders its snowy territory next to the ocean in search of prey. All right, uh, we need to make snow happen. Snowfall begins. I need to get the humidity up over 40%. And then it'll start to snow. Okay, there. Yeah! Alright, fungi. What did I get? I got fungi. I got moss on boulders. And I think I also got snowfall beginning. <clears throat> so my hope is once the snowfall starts, will it also depollute the ocean? Let's wait and find out. Hey, what's up, Rock Pusher? Thank you for 61 months, friend. A Rock Pusher is attracted to this ecosystem. <laughs> it's... Moss on boulders. I have to ask, Rock Pusher, was this a, a Sisyphus reference? You know, after 61 months, I should probably ask. It is. Oh. How's that going for you? <laughs> I just, sorry, that came out so rude. Figure rock pushers just rolling with it. That's fair. It's tedious but honest work. Fair. Oh, someone's got to do it. You know these rocks aren't gonna push themselves. You know, same old, same old. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Where's my first snowfall? Oh, there it is. Yeah! Alright. Does this... Oh my god, it is. Oh! All of the... Oh my god. All the lava's freezing over. Oh, wow. Oh, 
Well, for one, very pretty. How's the Twitch compression handling this? <laughs> Feel like putting polar bears and penguins? <laughs> Not great? Yeah, better than Tarkov grass. <gasps> oh my god, the auroras! Oh, so pretty. All right, so now it's time to start finding our animal friends. Large predator, ocean and snow. <clears throat> All right, let's find other ones first. Forms its home on ice. Nice, got it. All right, so we have our penguins. Now, I wonder if the bear wants to be next to the penguins. No. Alright, let's keep exploring. Swims in cold oceans under the ice. Maybe it's too far? It's not far enough out in the water? How about this? We did it! Narwhals! Where are they? I can't see them because of all the snow. There's another Aurora. Not enough ice. So my assumption is if I click enough with this, maybe I can get several. There we go. More narwhals. Uh, that means I could probably get more penguins too. Yeah, there's penguins there. The penguins here as well. Not enough ice. That's fine. All right. Now, herbivores, snow, and edible lichen. So here. Nice. All right, we've got elk. Hello. Put some elk here too. Is there enough lichen there? Oh, these rocks aren't lichen. Okay, I understand. But you should be here. Elk famously can't walk up hills. That's a mood. Same though. You ever tried to walk up a hill before? Exhausting. Especially when you're trying to push a rock up that hill. <laughs> Camouflaged in the snow and prowls the tundra. Not enough snow. Not enough snow. There we go. Arctic fox. I think that's... The, is the Arctic fox hiding in those little snow piles? They might be. The final animal. Large predator wanders its snow ter snowy territory next to the ocean in search of prey. Prey? Not enough ocean. There! Narwhal! So, I need snowy territory next to the ocean. I need a snowmaker. Oh, oh it's here. There it is. Okay. Freezes surrounding vegetation. So, hold on. So, if I do... Something like this. And then 
I search for penguins. Right? Not enough ice sheet? Really? There. Think you can't use the same tile for two different animals, which is why it's sometimes showing up as red? Maybe. Okay, so I need more ice here. Okay, if I do this, then I get penguins. So now I have penguins. And now I want bear. You think it wants elk specifically? Really? Snow and edible lichen. Because when I was over here, it just said, I thought it just said prey, right? Like, I thought this worked. Yeah. Wait. Oh, group of elk. Oh, I have elk there. Oh! Well, hold on then. Then what if I do this? Elk, ocean, but no snow. So the problem is, now that I've made penguins here, I'm actually making it increasingly difficult for me to get... Okay, alright, I got a plan. I need to make this all lichen. So that's lichen. And now I'm just going to yeet this into the sea. <clears throat> Wait for snow? No, no, no. I'm going to make snow. Then I'm going to flash freeze this area. Right? Form snow. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make elk here and I'm going to make polar bear here here Where's the bear? It's hiding. It's perfectly camouflaged in the snow. All right. Now. Now we need to rocket up that temperature. We need a little bit more humidity. We want our humidity to hit 70%. And then we want the temperature to hit 15 degrees Celsius. Let's start, let's start making things just a little bit toastier, shall we? Now, in order to do that, I do I have any more of the exposed lava thingies that I can detonate? There's the polar bears! Bear, bear, bear! Can't see them anymore. I can't see, like, the thermal areas, you know? Oh, there's one right there. Awesome. Okay. So I can detonate this, and this will get us a little bit more lava going. Oh, wait, but it's so cold, it's instantly freezing. <laughs> uh, undo! Undo! Nope. Alright, there's no undoing that one, eh? Noted. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Don't even worry about it. 
Let's just do this instead then. Oh, you know what we could do to this end, actually, is we could, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do a couple of these. Okay, so the snow should stop. Wait, what happens to my animals afterwards? I feel like I've discovered them. I hope I don't make the area, the environment, unhabitable for them, you know what I mean? But I do want to hit all of these milestones. There's a bear on its back? Where? Where? I see the two here. I don't believe for a second I heard a bear. It rolled over? Oh, okay, it was playing a game. I thought like I heard it and it was dying. And I was like, no, <laughs> I refuse. All right, three degrees more. There we go. Now we've got butterflies. And I need to get up to 15 degrees for the migratory birds to come back. I hope I'm doing this correctly. Now I just need a little bit more humidity. Seventy percent humidity should be all of my goals achieved. There we go. Show butterflies. I don't see them yet. Oh wait, there they are. The but oh my god, they're so pretty. The butterflies are up in the uh, the tundra. They're up in the tundra with the butterflies and the aurora. Oh my god, there's the snowy owls flying around too. Oh my god. Perfect. Oh. Oh, I didn't raise the humidity first. Crap. So migratory birds needs over 15 degrees Celsius. And I guess I try and cool it again. All right. So now we're at 16 degrees. We hit those two. And now I need to get the temperature back down under 10. There. So that's 100% of the animals and 100% of the goals. I think I nailed it. <laughs> These poor migratory birds are... Wait! <laughs> Is now our time? I don't know. All right, so now it's time to pack everything up and head home. Let's get ourselves down, down by the water here. Yeah. And then we want the recycling station. Connects to the monorails. So this should be a pretty easy map to unpack everything. Or repack, rather. I like that our monorail just kind of goes, whew, just kind of crescents around everything, you know? Do 
Sure does look like it grabs everything there. Oh, did I miss one? Might have. Grab that on the way back. Possibly the earliest recorded example of thermostatic control were built by Dutch innovator Cornelius Drebbel about 1620 in England. He invented a mercury thermostat to regulate the temperature of a chicken incubator. I just realized, you know what I just realized? You know what I just remembered? I remembered that April 1st traditionally is the day that Gunner doesn't tell puns. He only spits facts. And I just clued into it now that that's what he was doing. Oh my god. That's so funny. I, <laughs> I thought Gunner was... <laughs> Gunner's been doing this for yeah, four hours later. Look, 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 look. I... I... Yeah. Look, I'm just making things pretty, okay? Couple people mentioned it earlier. Well, I know that they mentioned that you're dropping facts, but I didn't know that they mentioned facts as in it was like an April Fool's bit. You know what I mean? Don't reward this behavior, Joe. <laughs> how dare you, how dare me? Wow. What do you mean no dessert for me? Joe, you're brilliant and perfect and Gunner's hilarious. Can I have dessert now? I don't get dessert for a while. No, everything Gunner's been dropping today are real facts. That's the joke. <laughs> Simpsons microphone thing dots the joke or whatever, right? Like. <laughs> <clears throat> This is four years in a row that you've done that, Gunner? I just clued into it now. Your commitment to this bit is remarkable. Now that I understand how the monorails work for the purposes of, like, moving things back, this is uh, very cool. <clears throat> Proof that Gunner is hilarious. Clipped by Gunner. All right. Oh, I can go that way. That's easy enough. <clears throat> What do you mean 1% toxicity? The snow will solve that for us. All right, and we outie.
Bear, 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 bear. Very important that you keep your elk and your bear separated. Oh, it's rolling on its back! If a polar bear does it, is it still called a snow angel? Oh yeah, the snow effect. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll move on. It's very pretty to me, but yeah, I imagine. Oh, Ugh, that was a lot. <laughs> Look, Twitch compression's doing its best. All right, we're learning. So the first map, we missed an animal. The second map, we missed one Chivo. Hundred percent this time. Let's go. On March twenty eighth. 2007, the Guinness World Records confirmed that North Dakota holds the most world records for the most snow angels made simultaneously in one place. The event occurred February 17th when 8,962 snow angels were created by people on the state capitol grounds in Bismarck. Wait, Bismarck, North Dakota? Neat. All right. Yawn. What's up, friend? Thank you for 45 months. The snow was making it pretty unbearable. Thank you for the 45. Considering the fact that angels are nine-dimensional horror beings, the things humans make aren't really snow angels either. Fair. Not enough eyes? <clears throat> If someone's taking, if Gunner's taking the day off, someone's got to pick up the slack. Oh, there is no shortage of people attacking me with puns in this chat, Yon. I was technically in the Guinness Book of World Records for the world's largest group hug. It was a cancer fundraiser? Oh, Arclight. Wow. Welcome to the Continental. Restoring urban areas presents its own unique set of challenges. You'll need to work around existing concrete when dredging the ocean floors to create land on which to grow plants. Former cities can also be the home of particularly hazardous materials. To begin with, dredge the ocean floor to create land to grow greenery. Once dredging is complete, recycle your dredgers. You can then place tidal turbines in the resulting pockets of deep water. What a beautiful map. Obviously, it's bad. <laughs> right? However, storytelling, all sorts of stuff is happening here. I love this. The undersea dredger digs up earth from the seafloor and deposits it on the surface, creating land. Can create or can connect to the monorail network. So I don't know if I quite understand what it wants me to do. Ocean too deep to dredge. Oh. Let's start here. So what does this do? Move Earth from the seafloor to the surface using the monorail network.
How do I recycle it now? I am at this. What's up, friend? Thank you for that prime in 21 months. Oh, for a puzzle game, please don't give hints until we ask for it. I mean, part of the beautiful thing about a puzzle game is puzzle nature, right? That's all good. With a recycler. Oh, I haven't made a recycler yet, of course. I don't have a recycler yet. Seismic detonator. Recycle a fully used dredger. Maybe I can recycle it. Tidal turbine uses ocean currents to generate electricity. Those buildings just snapped into existence when I did that. This is fascinating and also kind of challenging, both at the same time. Can't fill that because it's too deep, eh? You love that you can see where the streets were and you place down the dredger. The, the fine details of this game are really good. I mean, I also kind of love that you can see the tops of the buildings here as well. So now... I don't love that the buildings disappear and reappear every time I place things. But, you know, I guess it is what it is. How did I do this again? It was just that, right? Yeah. So I can make another tidal turbine there. just keep going up. Alright. What if I go all the way down to here just so I can try and maximize later? Maybe that's greedy? Do you think I could get another... Hmm...
Kind of hoping to get like another power thing over here just so I can get that spot. Maybe I was supposed to push that in slightly further so I could hit that corner, but this is fine. Again, it is it is what it is. All right, let's try and maximize. I could eventually grow more space there. So that'll do for now. That'll do for now, you know? Yeah, rain can fill in the gaps for sure. Absolutely. What a cool map so far. Oh, right. I forgot. Hold on. So check this out. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So I forgot that I don't even need to build another one. I can just move it using my monorail network. Therefore, maximizing my green space because this is just free, right? Cost thirty to move, but it's cheaper than making a new one. Oh, okay. So it's not it's not as free as I thought, but that's still very powerful. All right, let's head over here now and try and get some greenery going. You know. All right. So I want to. I need to sort of plan where I want the power to go. So let's make power here, and then start filling some of the earth in over on this side. You know. Can probably move the scrubbers as well. Oh, good call. Yeah. Yeah, only the places. Yeah, 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 yeah. You are. Yes, you're correct. Oh, you can actually grab the whole... Oh my god, I didn't realize I could be reclaiming those skyscrapers too. Oh, jeez. Now they're just large empty husks. Huh. Oh, I accidentally picked up all my towers too, didn't I? Oh, no, I didn't. I just don't have any more towers because they were all attached to our first friend. Yeah, okay. Still saves me a little bit of money. Or money. Green. What do you think the currency in this game is called? I want to call it Leaf. I think that's too silly to call it. Leaf dollars. Ericsons. <laughs> call it leaves. But why leaves? Why is my monorail not connecting here? Really? It's off by one? Wow, what's that like? Maybe that's a bug. <laughs> Can't believe I powered through the whole game and it never occurred to me to move my buildings to save money. I mean, look, it is what it is, right? No wrong way to play a game. I have one more land move I can do. I should probably try and connect my um, 
my network up here. Oh, this is a problem. There we go. Uh, get it over here. All right, so now... I have to be really careful that I don't accidentally take apart other parts of my infrastructure. Actually, that's an interesting question. I wonder if I even need... Like, if I move this, what happens? I wonder. Like, do these stop working? Yes. All right. Well, that's good to know. I feel like that was actually really bad. Wait, no, they, they keep working. So we leave that there because I can't rebuild it anyways. I can just build a new one. Hmm. We're getting there. This is slow but steady progress in the early game on this one, eh? Alright, let's do a little bit more dredging so that we can get some more value out of that. Um, and to that end... Now let's dig a hole hereabouts, shall we? I want more soil here. Help me understand the sheep mines. I mean, what's what's your question there, Snurge? What do you want to know about the sheep mines? Seems pretty self-explanatory. There's a lazy sheep river, thank you very much. Yeah, you got it. Oh, interesting. So, I can no longer collect this because I put a landmass in the way. So what I need to do to get there is I need to do just a, just a little bit of... What's a little detonation amongst friends? There we go. So now we can go down here and we can reclaim this. You want real sheep? You need to go underground to where they keep their eggs? I don't know what that means, and I'm actually a little bit scared. He doesn't know about sheep eggs. Making a joke like in, um, the heck's that movie called? Demolition Man. How does he not know the three shells? <laughs> oh, what are my milestones? I probably should have looked at these. 22% uh, humidity. So nothing cares about the number of buildings I have. So I want under 15. I just want to raise my humidity as quickly as possible, actually. That's kind of good to know.
That is a great and terrible movie. Yeah, that is exactly correct. Actually, I don't like where that was. Let's go here first. So I think that the brown bar going down is a bad thing. No, the brown bar... Oh, the geological stability. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You can act. Yeah, you can. Let's go ahead and move that one. Go ahead and move that one. When has geological instability caused any problems? Only when people live places, but we're not making places for people. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're at 84% cleanliness right now. And let's see if I can't adjust the world to make things better. So I can't help but notice I don't get rain on this map. So no rain means I'm not going to get the ability to kind of 100% clean everything. You know what I mean? Or maybe we'll get there later. And nothing wants under a certain threshold. So I can just get a little bit more humidity here, and this is totally fine. 50% humidity, and I want 70%. Wait, it looks like more things showed up. Hold on. Time out. Uh, IV overgrowth. We want a 70% ideal humidity here. 62. 68. 72. Oh, look at this! All right, now we're getting a little bit of a green trim along the sides here. That's very pretty. All right, I want another dredger in and around here, if at all possible. This will be another excellent source of power. You had a 4.5 earthquake a few miles from me last night. That... That feels too close, Koo. Cool. What if you... What if you didn't do that? You could hear the pre-rumble? That sounds... Horrifying. <laughs> Just the term pre-rumble horrifies me. All right, so now send the old buoy dome, buoy drome in. Oh, I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> a few miles in the other direction is an Air Force base. You're like, let's play a fun game. Earthquake or military disaster. I'm your host. <laughs> Today on the show. Uh.
very close now. Ninety nine percent. How dare you? What is this margin of error? <laughs> Off by one? No, that, that ain't me. That ain't me. Dredging may have made the ground unstable. Nevertheless, increase biodiversity by creating enclosed lagoons and bamboo groves in the shells of the skyscrapers. Use the roots of new deciduous forests to break down the concrete. Hey, do you see that little wiggle? It's probably nothing. Mineralizer. All right. Actually, mineralizer is huge. Is mineralizer, can I make... Oh, I can't make power poles. The, thal the Thalassic Purifier creates a completely enclosed area of ocean to create a lagoon. So I think if it's not enclosed, I have to enclose it. So in order to do that, I need a little bit more dredging. Any uh, dredgers in the chat? That feels scripted. All right, radiation cleanser cleanses the area around it of radiation. Must be built on rock or concrete. Ooh. Om nom nom. How do I get rid of that? Uses sunflowers to absorb radiation. Build on a radioactive waste deposit in order to neutralize it. Can't build within radiation. Oh, can't build within radiation. Must be built on rock or concrete. Ah, <gasps> pretty. I cannot move you. Can I move you? Can't move you either. All right, good. Good to know. Good to know, right? What can you move? What can you not move? These are always important questions. And I feel like we're learning so much about this game together. Wait, what are these? 
Move Earth from the seafloor to the surface using the monorail network. I can just move the Earth now? I don't know if I quite understand. What if I... Hold on. What if I push a little bit more of this back further? Doesn't look like I can. Alright, that's good enough. We found where they were storing Twitch chat. Underground. <laughs> They're cozy there. Look, if I could be stored underground as well, I think I would. Seems very cozy down there, Max. Let me in. All right, I have to get closer this way, apparently. Wait, can't be built in the radiation? What? All right, there we go. Now we can inch our way forward, right? Why? Oh, I'm dying. I think it's a power diff. I think that's the issue. Doesn't say it requires power. So the only issue we're having right now is we can't actually get close enough onto that, which is kind of odd. Cleanses the area of radiation. Must be built on rock or on concrete. Provides electricity. Must be built within range of electricity boosting building. Must be built on a rock or concrete. You, oh, the small ones require power. All right, let's try and get some more points here. Just really quickly. So, my issue is, am I off by one? Like, what is what is happening here? Why can't I reach this? I can't build in the radiation, right? By the way, this chat is the only place I know to find Minecraft origin info. Amazing. It's not power. Again, the game the game tells you if a building needs power. This one does not require power. If it does, so for example, it shows like the requires power symbol there. So this does not require power. It just requires to be built on this. And the error I'm getting is uh, can't be built on radiation. 
right? The other one needs power, but I also can't build that closer. So there's two issues here. One, I can't move power forward, right? So like this is the thing that lets me build my power closer. And two, I can't build this any closer either. So maybe I'm supposed to try and get power like here or something. Like put in a dredger and try and move everything. I'm not, I don't know. I'm not quite certain what's going on. So let's try, let's try and clean everything up here. So I need to try and get a power plant right into there, but this is harder than I thought. So I'm going to try and dig a hole so I can put another power plant into that. Monorail away buildings that use power. What what do you think that's going to do, Ertitron? What is your... This is also... No, I mean, tell me what you think the solution here is. Because uh, so far, what everybody is saying doesn't seem to make any sense. Gunner says, in January 1882, the world's first public coal-fired power station, the Edison Electrical Station, was built in London, a project of Thomas Edison organized by Edward Johnson. Thank you. You've used eight out of eight connections to that power plant. That's what you think the problem is. So the issue is that this is full. Oh, oh. Let's test this. Let's test this fan theory. Is there anywhere I can put this down and get some value? Yeah, like here. So now your thought process is, I should be able to do this. Oh, you're a genius. Okay. We've discovered what the problem was. Dabs. <laughs> Sorry. This is the problem of, it, I, I want to say this gently. This is the problem sometimes of backseating if you explain the what, but not the why. Because just, just be like, yeah, sometimes without a very clear indication as to what the actual problem is, I don't understand what it is I'm supposed to be fixing. Well, I wonder why that isn't zero. I mean, it seems to be fine. This area is once irradiated, therefore it will always be irradiated, maybe. Ooh, butterflies. All right, let's heat this world up just a titch. A little, little, little bit of combustion is a treat, you know? No, not that biome. There. Seven degrees. Ambient radiation, it's fine. Lots of things are ambiently radioactive. Just as a treat, you know? All right, we want to heat things up. Oh, rain begins. Nice. Uh, 25 degrees hot. Migratory birds are back. Guess who's back? Back again. Birds are back. Kaka. There, 25 degrees. And now I just need to crank up that uh, dog. Time to crank up that humidity. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, if I may. I don't want to make you too jealous, chat, but peep this. Look at this apple fritter. The cross-section of a perfect apple fritter. Tw 
12 CPM is actually below the normal, which is approximately 18 CPM that you would expect. So is everything constantly a little bit radioactive? Fascinating. So anyways, let's watch the rain, listen to this music, and watch me eat an apple fritter. Jojo, is this Gunner's reward for being hilarious? What is this donut? <laughs> Gunner, you just got a sure from Joe. Oh my god. It's a good donut. Some days you wish Joe had a mic. We thought about it in the early days. I think Texan Reverend came very, very, very close to donating a second microphone to the channel so that we could hear Joe. What's up, Triple? A moose, eh? Could be a deer, though. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that is the most Canadian username I have ever seen. Holy crap. A moose, eh? Oh, could be a deer, though. Yeah. Beautiful. Hello, fellow Canadian. How do you do? Use a skyscraper frame to grow tall bamboo. Recycle a skyscraper to uncover its frame. Oh my god. What if we just gave Joe a soundboard? <laughs> I'm hanging out. And then she's just like doing punchlines for jokes. What do you think? And she's like, a woo or whatever. <laughs> yeah, you just want to give Joe the soundboard equivalent of using, like, chat, like, emotes, right? Yeah. All right. How do I... I really want to try and fill in the earth here. So one of the things that I need to do is I need to make lagoons. You know what? I got it. I got it. I can make this a lagoon. I can make this a lagoon right here. So if I fill this, right? So now, in theory, I should be able to... Wait, tree roots break the surrounding concrete to grow a deciduous forest. Deciduous? Here we go. Oh, wait! I could have just put it... Wait, area's too large to purify? Here we go. Beautiful. <gasps> I can make it bigger with bombs. <laughs> Better living through explosions. All right, I just have to wait for the uh, the rain to clear that pollution out. Wait, maybe maybe you'll do this for me. So if I do this, I can block off another area. Good. Somebody say canal? Maybe. Oh, am I going to have to undo everything with boat boat, though? That might be challenging. We'll see. I try and cut off the right bottom corner. I was trying that earlier, Smith. But you could see that it doesn't actually want to cover that landmass. So I don't know if the map is 3D and I'm seeing the edge, or if I just can't cut off that area. I think it's the latter.
Oh my goodness, that's still not enough? Challenging. Well. There we are. Too large to purify. Oh no. All right, undo. <laughs> Boo! I'm so close to having enough. It's very frustrating. Oh, what if, what if, hold on. All right, let's go ahead and remove some of this, right? I'll have to put the, uh, the tower back. All right, so my goal there is we make enough room so that now when I block, when I try and block this off, because I only need like just the tiniest little percentage, right? How are you? Joe's shocked I haven't finished my donut yet. I'm, I'm gaming. I'm vibing, my love. Hmm. Okay, that's not enough. I think it specifically hates the central like where your boat is. Oh. Oh, here's a plan then. All right, let's uh let's detonate a couple of bombs. And our goal here is going to be to make this area larger. All right, so let's seal it off first and then we'll just explode it until it's big enough. Nice. That does it. That does it. All right. The final thing we need to do is we need to plant deciduous forest. And in order to do that, tree roots break the surrounding concrete. Must be built on a toxic scrubber. Oh, stunning. We're just going to move that building over. Hit him with one of these. Can we just talk about for a second how just absolutely gorgeous this game is? As your final step, you'll need to finish recycling the city, reintroduce animals, and construct an interstellar rocket? Pardon? Use satellite scans to gather seeds from all over the planet to store them into your rocket's vault. Finally, place this guidebook in the cockpit and leave the restored world behind. Oh, we outie. Eh? Later, nerds. Max, please. All right, where where are the animals at? Let's find out. This shell-bearing reptile frolics in the large lagoons. That's like a large lagoon right there, right? Turtle. Hi, little buddy. Hold on found them. They were there all along.
Found so many turtles. All right, next. This resplendent fowl struts on wide open grasslands. Found some peacock there. I'm going to try and do my best peacock. Uh -huh. How'd I do? We actually have peacocks in Victoria. I wonder if they're going to strut their tail feathers. Flawless. Not loud enough. I live in an apartment. <laughs> Don't want to get my first noise complaint to be like, our neighbor's pretty kind, but then they brought home a fl like. I don't know why there were peacocks in their apartment, but you know. What do you think the chances are they fan their tail feathers? Our monorail looks like it has two rails. That would be a bi-rail. Which is not a monorail. <gasps> they did it! Look! Yeah! Good job, Burbo! Yeah! <laughs> I'm so happy they do that. Wow. I love when games use peacocks to be like, look how exotic this place is. And you're like, yeah, dog. Well, we also live somewhere pretty exotic and lush, Max, to be fair. All right. I have... So much further on me right now. Give me one second to wash my hands. I'll leave you with the peacocks. Hello. All right, let's find even more animals. Next up, we have the giant, gentle, happy, oh, it's a panda. We need a bamboo near a glade. What is a glade? Is a glade an open area? Found it, nailed it, in fact. Panda! Oh my God, look at it. Sure as a panda. Yep. <laughs> this fierce raptor makes its iry in a tall structure near a source of prey. All right. We haven't discovered prey for it yet. What, what if we go here? All right. It doesn't want to eat the birds. Okay. Okay, so we don't have prey for it yet, but we'll get there. This airy? Airy, I imagine, is kind of like nest. All right, what do we have now? Wide spread sui form roots for tubers in the undergrowth of a deciduous forest. Deciduous, uh, whatever. Is it a pig? I found it. Wait, undiscovered. Hold on. Um, partially met greenery. Got there. It's a boar! Oh my god, it's a pig, friend. Some kind of truffle pig, eh? Joe says, no babies. Zero out of ten. Fair, honestly. And then finally, we have... Endangered marine mammal darts amongst the fronds of the kelp forest. Uh, what? I don't think we have kelp. Am I supposed to have kelp? Flying recycling drone. Hold on, what am I supposed to build you on? Oh, upgrades the boat. All right. 
And this gives me access to the satellite uplink. Launches a satellite that allows you to scan for plant species and collect seeds. Time to milk, make kelp? I guess so. Uh, if I remember correctly, for kelp, I need to yeet something into the ocean, right? Oh my goodness. Hello. Goodbye, little balloon. Why do pigs live in the forests? It's arboreal. Oh, that's very shiny. Oh my god. No comms detected. Rockets. <laughs> Base for the rocket. Yeah, I guess. Holy moly. Uh, what? What? You saw kelp a bit deeper? Oh, do you think there's organic kelp? Sorry, I thought I had to make kelp. All right, real quick. Are you kelp? Yeah, oh my God, sea otters. Fantastic. All right, so there's no, there should be kelp there then. So what do you eat? Do you eat sea otters? Let's find out what their prey is. Do you hunt the panda? No. Do you hunt peacocks? No. Do you hunt turtles? No. Do you hunt sea otters? No. Do you hunt pig? Yes! You hunt pig. Wait, that means I should be able to make pig here. I have to somehow undo this tower. Or hold on, or hold on. Deciduous, deciduous. So if I make forest here, I can make pig happen. How do I make forest happen again? Forest. Right, actually this would be perfect because I have a tower right there. And then I make pig. Then I make bird who eats the pig. Let's go. Kaka! Oh, look at it at the top of that. Yes, it's standing on the top of the thingy. Okay. We have all the animals. We have all the animals. We have all the hidden chivos. Now it's about time for me. Do I want to start cleaning stuff up yet or no? What's up, doodly doo? So, seed vault uplink. I guess it wants me to launch a rocket now? Oh. Uh, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Still need that satellite dish, presumably. Let's go like this for now. This is the only space that has enough space so far. That is such... Wait, there's fish in the middle of it. Uh... <laughs> Hold. Just ignore that, please. Rocket thruster. Stage one of nine. The Cosmic Array, stage two of nine, unlocks the River Valley view on the satellite uplink. Boom. <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to do with, um, how do I make seeds happen? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Chat. Oh, I understand now.
I mean, them flowers. Are you flowers? So now it wants a little bit of river scan, eh? Oh, it tells you for aiming properly. Okay, I understand now. So now we go to the next biome. Fascinating. Unlocks the desolate island view. How big is this rocket? <laughs> Nine segments. I mean, I can count. I more so mean like... Just the, the, the sheer, like, how deep does this hole get, you know? Alright, now I need to find some mangroovies. It's about the size of one large rocket. Oh! But, like, look! Every time we add to it, this hole just gets deeper. Oh, man. What does it remind me of? Like a Nerf gun, where we just keep pushing more into it and it's compressing the spring. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you think it's actually checking the map that we build? I I don't know. It's a good question. Oops. Ah. Uh... No, no, because our our volcanic one, I think it was different from this. I can't remember, to be honest. Wait, I'm not on the... I want to be on the um, volcanic glacier, right? Because our volcanic glacier... Wait, maybe? It had a big peninsula on the south here that raised up. Then it had some islands aside here. This could have been ours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very cool. All right, game. Well played. The better you build your biomes, the easier that stage is. I mean, that's also very cool. The average NASA rocket is 37 meters tall. So the hole is likely around that range. That's so big. Look, you can still see all our things still on it, eh? <gasps> Recall satellite. Splash. <clears throat> All right, and now, now it is time to clean. Pack it up. 
We done here. I might need a little rock launcher here, won't I? Do I have what? Do I have access to one? I need to extend this ever so slightly. Wait, maybe that's close enough? Let's find out. Nice. Okay, never mind. We fine. <laughs> Starship and a booster on a normal rocket is 120 meters? That's so big. Like, that's ginormous. 120 meters. I should learn more about spaceships. Uh, it looks like... Actually, hold on. Looks like I might need to do this. How many people here in chat have ever been to, like, a live rocket launch? Apparently that's a thing you can do. You can just go down and, like, watch the rockets take off. How is it as a spectacle? Is it is it phenomenal? Does it make you question your own place in the universe? You've got a lot. That's so cool. Cape Canaver, Cape whatever, whatever it's called. I'm not, I actually don't know how to pronounce that word. Not trying to troll. Wish we had done that when I was a kid near Houston. Huh. You've been to NASA, but never when they were doing stuff. Canaveral. Cape Canaveral. Okay, thank you. Good job, little drone. Canaveral. <laughs> All right, okay. I didn't want to say, yeah, Cape Cadaver or whatever, you know? I got to visit the Astronaut Hall of Fame in Florida. Very cool. Apparently, they're working on another moon landing. Like, human humans stepping foot on the moon again. Which is very cool and good. Speaking of which, I think it's time we launch this baby to the moon! I love that as the rocket flies out, that becomes overgrown in vegetation as well. There's the whales. We never got to see them.
Pew pew. What a delightful game. What an absolutely delightful game. Bravo. What a great day today has been. And I like that you can go back through as a challenge mode and redo all the levels as well. Huh. <clears throat> Actual, like 10 out of 10, no notes. <laughs> Oh, 9.8 out of 10, no baby animals? Fair. All right, fair. At some point, you should try the post-game levels that now unlocked. It's four more, and they're substantially different. We could try that tomorrow, honestly. World Reclaimed. Baby animals are too hard to spot with radar. That's fair. Planet doesn't look like Earth. I believe it's supposed to be different, you know? 51%. Yeah. You've unlocked alternate versions of all of the regions. Select a region to play its alternate version. You know what? Let's, let's leave that for tomorrow then, friends. This has been fun. Turns out there's actually a big thing I was supposed to do yesterday that I forgot to do. Um, which is email an invoice to one of my sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of a big one so i think what we're gonna do is we're gonna call it there and we'll come back and we'll try out new game plus tomorrow so thank you so so much for joining this has been a really fun day a really cozy day if you're new and you enjoy the vibes i'd appreciate a follow come on back you know let's do more of this in the future thank you everybody for watching thank you for the positivity uh, i'd like to give a particular shout out to gunner for all those very excellent and relevant facts <laughs> <laughs> and thank you cuddly kitty for the raid and shout out to james for the raid hope you all had a good time i know i did this was delightful absolutely delightful you know what You know who we don't often get a chance to raid is Dead Pine, because Dead Pine always streams before we do. So Dead Pine is playing a little bit of Sky Vaults right now. He's an absolutely delightful fellow that we get to play a bunch of Minecraft with, but because he's on the East Coast, oh my God, he's 11 hours into a day? What in the world? Why is he streaming for 11 hours? Anyways, go make a new friend. Go say hi. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.